6.4, adding and subtracting rational expressions, perform the indicated operation and simplify. So the difference between 6.3 and 6.4 is this. 6.3, all your denominators are going to be the same. 6.4, you're going to add and subtract, your denominators are going to be different. So we have to focus on making sure your denominators are the same. So since we have common denominators, we just combine the numerators. So denominators are the same, the denominator stays the same, you're going to add 4 plus x plus 3, combine like terms, 4 and 3 becomes a 7, so that's x plus 7 over x. And again, it's good to just keep the parentheses, they're technically not needed, but if you're going to type them into your calculator, again, if you have an older calculator, you will want that. Here, binomial x minus 5, x minus 5, same denominator. There it is. I put parentheses around it, so in case I wanted to grade it. Add the top, 3x plus 2x. Okay, this will be a 5x plus 1. Remember, I can't cancel anything. It's either all of it or none of it. That's the reason for the parentheses as well. Here my denominators are the same, so 2x plus 1. We'll put that at the bottom, and then we'll start to combine the top. So 2x squared plus the two x squared here. That's going to give us a 3x squared. 3x plus x, that will give us a 4x. Minus 7 plus a minus 8 is going to give us a minus 15. Now here, before we take off in the next problem, notice the direction said perform the indicated operations and simplify if possible. Well, there was nothing to cancel here, nothing to cancel here. Here you might be able to cancel. So again, we may have to factor and cancel. So here's my check. First term, does it divide into the first term? Does 2 divide evenly into 3? No, it doesn't, so therefore we don't have to factor. But if this was a 3x, yes, it could cancel in there. This 1 can divide into 15. You've got to go first term and last terms. If you say yes to both, then you've got to factor and check to see if you can cancel. Well, in this case, 2 doesn't go into 3. We're done. Next problems, here we have minus signs. Put an asterisk by these. You need to distribute the minus sign. That's the number one place I find mistakes. All right, so here, denominators are the same. x plus 2, I wrapped it in parentheses on the bottom. This is the 3x, technically in parentheses, minus x minus 5. You have to distribute the minus sign. So that becomes 3x minus x plus 5. 3x minus x, that's going to give us a 2x plus 5. All right, so 2 doesn't divide into 5. There's no GCF. We're done. Leave it alone. <clears throat> Here, denominators are the same. x minus 4, x minus 4. But this minus sign has to be distributed to the x and to the 12. So this becomes x squared minus x minus 12. Now x can divide into x squared, 4 can divide into 12. So we're thinking about factoring. The two numbers that multiply to be 12 and subtract to be a negative 1 is negative 4 and a positive 3. So our x minus 4s get to cancel. It's x plus 3. So again, if you forgot to change the sign, and this was a plus sign, You'd be looking for what two factors of 12 add up to be a negative 1. There's nothing that adds up to be negative 1, so you won't attempt to cancel this. All right? You'd either have to have minus, minus, or a plus, plus, or in this case, minus, minus, and that would not work, and we'd have the wrong answer. So again, I would recommend bringing in your calculator to grade these. Now, I've got the fancy TI-84 plus CE. This is a great calculator. Again, my X value doesn't matter what you want to put in there. Okay, we don't want it to be a 0. So if I want it to be a 2, store it for X. That will work. I type in my problem. Alpha Y equals fraction 4 over X. <clears throat> X, get in there, okay, plus alpha Y equals my fraction command X plus 3 over
over the x. Enter, it's 4.5. We go down, we type in our answer. Alpha y equals fraction, because it's a text box, you don't need parentheses, all right? The text box acts like your parentheses on your calculator. And I get 4.5, so that's correct. Now, the other thing I'm going to show you here is what if you have an older calculator and how do I have to type this in? Some older calculators, you don't have the fraction key. So we'll have to use the division symbol, but when you use the division symbol, you need parentheses. So here I'd store 2 in for x, and I typed in 4 divided by x, because there's one term on the top, one on the bottom. I don't need parentheses. Plus, there's two terms on the top. I need parentheses. Two or more of anything on the top or bottom, you need parentheses. Divided by x, 4.5 x plus 7, I need parentheses, divided by x, 4.5. Here, 3x, there's two items up there. I need to put parentheses around it, divided by x minus 5, plus the 2x plus 1 in parentheses, divided by x minus 5. There's the decimal. Typed in my answer. Same decimal tells me I'm right. Over here, it gets a little bit longer and crazy. Just make sure you put parentheses around the top, divided by parentheses on the bottom, plus parentheses around the top, divided by parentheses around the bottom. I get a 1. I type in my answer, I get a 1. Okay. <clears throat> Over here, x is still 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. It's not going to give us a 0. 3x over the x plus 2, x minus 5 over the x plus 2, parentheses around the both. I'm subtracting them now. I get 2.25. I type in my answer. Same decimal answer, not verifies it's right. Over here, x is still 2. x squared, parentheses around it, 4 minus x in the bottom, minus x plus 12, over x minus 4. I get a 5, x plus 3, 5, both same answers. I know this is right. All right, so now we're going to focus in on what happens when we don't have common denominators. Well, you have something known as the least common multiple, LCM. It's also known as part of the least common denominator. So the way you find the least common multiple is two steps. List every prime factor once and list every prime factor to its largest power. So what we have to do is you have to do prime factorization. So we're going to cut this in half. Remember a couple sections back, we did that upside down staircase. You can do that here, but I'm going to demonstrate this technique instead. So I break it in half. So we're going to break down the 12, 4 times 3, break down the 4, 2 times 2. So its prime factorization is 2 squared times 3. 30, 5 times 6, or 3 times 10, doesn't matter. 6, 2 times 3. But 2 times 3 times 5 is its prime factorization. So step number 1 for the LCM, list every prime factor once. I have a 2, I have a 3, and a 5. Don't list the 2 and the 3 again. You're already, we're already going to list it. There they are. Now, what's the highest factor on the, the exponent on the 2? The power of 2. Highest on the 3? A 1. Highest on the 5? A 1. I don't have to put anything there. Multiply this all out. 60 is my least common multiple. Variables are super easy. That's why we use this technique, because we're going to consider your variables as already a prime factor. So all we have to do is break down the 21 to 3 and 7. So we get 3 times 7 times x cubed times y cubed. We're going to treat the x and the y as if it's a prime factor. 35 breaks down to 5 times 7, then bring down it times x to the 8th times y squared. All right, least common multiple, list every prime factor once. The 3, the 5, the 7, the x, and the y. Now, no exponents on the 3, 5, or 7. Let's go to x cubed. The biggest power was 8. I need an 8 here. Biggest power on my y 
is the 6. Put in the 6. Multiply this out. Let's see. We're going to get 3 times 5 times 7. That comes out to be 105. X to the 8th, Y to the 6th. This is going to be so helpful when we get to writing out least common denominators. Here we have a trinomial and a binomial. Again, we got a factor first. We have two factors of six that subtract to be five. How about, oh, a six and a one. So six plus six minus one. X squared minus one is X plus one X minus one. So each one of these binomials, we're gonna consider a prime factor. My least common multiple is to list out each one once, the x plus 6, the x minus 1, and the x plus 1. And the order doesn't matter. Whatever you do, do not multiply this out. We don't want to make a mistake in your multiplying and get something wrong. Here's another trinomial, another difference of perfect squares. We're going to factor first. Here, we're going to get two numbers that multiply to be 9 to add up to 6. That's x plus 3, x plus 3. But wait, they're the same. We're going to write it as x plus 3 squared because that's part of our step 2. Here we have x plus 3, x minus 3 for the difference of perfect squares. Least common multiple, list the x plus 3, list the x minus 3. The biggest power uh, that we have is the 2 on the x plus 3. X minus 3 had a 1, just leave it alone. Don't multiply it out. It's all done. That's just the way we want it. So these least common multiples that we're finding here is going to be what we need to do to find the least common denominator. Okay, so write equivalent fractions with the LCD. That means we need to change these two fractions so they both have the same common denominator and it's going to be the least common denominator. And that means we have to adjust your numerators. So it's like, okay, we reduced the fraction to get here. Now we need to make the fraction bigger. So LCD is the same as the LCM. So just like I did before, I'm focusing on the denominators. We're going to break each one down. Well, 36, 6 times 6, and then 2 times 3, 2 times 3, 2 squared, 3 squared, x squared. Bring down the x squared. 24x, we can go 6 and 4, 8 and 3, whatever you want. Just keep breaking it down. We're going to get 3 2, so 2 to the third times 3x. Now, what's my least common denominator? Same way we did the least common multiple. List every factor once 2, 3x. Biggest power on the 2, 3. Biggest power on the 3, 2. Biggest power on the x, 2. That's my least common denominator. Now we multiply out these numbers. So 2 to the third is 8. 3 squared is 9. 8 times 9 is 72x squared. That means this is my denominator for both fractions. So to change these up, 5 over 36x squared is going to equal to something that's 72x squared. Now there's two ways to approach this. What I like to do is use what you have as your least common denominator in factored form. All right, and ask yourself, what's missing from 36x squared that's in 72x squared? Well, it's an x squared, x squared, 3 squared, 3 squared. I'm missing 1, 2. So we multiply 2 to the top and bottom. 36 times 2 is 72. 5 times 2 is 10. That's the new fraction. It's equivalent to this fraction, 5 over 36x squared. Now we do the same thing with 7 over 24x. Look what we have here. What's missing here that's in your least common denominator? Well, 2 to the third, 2 to the third. Oop, I'm missing a 3 and an x. So we'll multiply 3x, top and bottom. 24x times 3x, that's 72x squared. We already knew that. Now we're adjusting the numerator, 7 times 3x is 21x. These are the two fractions that are equivalent to what we were given. If we have binomials and trinomials, nothing changes. Factor. Factor, factor, factor. What, oh, and by the way, whatever you do here, don't reduce these answers because you go right back to where you started. 
So factor the denominators. We got an x plus 6, x minus 1. We got the difference of perfect squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. I think this is what we had on the previous slide. My least common denominator, x plus 6, x minus 1, x plus 1 x plus 6, x minus 1, x plus 1. We already listed the x minus 1. We don't need it again. Don't multiply this out. All right, so the first fraction, x plus 3 over x squared plus 5x minus 6, all right, has to be equal to this. So what factor in this denominator is missing from my LCD? That's right, it's x plus 1. That's what I need to multiply the top by. Now here, you want to FOIL this out. And the reason I say that is people will put x plus 1, x plus 3, and lo and behold, they cancel the x plus 1s, and you're right back to where you started. So FOIL this, we'll get x squared plus 3x plus 1x will be 4x, 1 times 3 is 3. That's one of my answers. Now we do x plus 7 over the x squared minus 1. We have the x plus 1, x minus 1. You're missing the x plus 6. We'll multiply that to the top and the bottom. Foil out the top, x squared. We'll get 7x plus 6x is 13x. 7 times 6 is plus 42. These are your two answers that we're looking for. So now, whenever you need to have a common denominator, or a least common denominator in this case, we understand that you have to change the numerators before you can add. And that's what we're going to run into here. So here we have 5x squared plus 8, or excuse me, 5x squared over 8 plus 7x over 12. I cannot answer, uh, answer this yet because I do not have common denominators. So we're going to take the 8 and the 12 and find the least common denominator. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a staircase method that you can do. It's, a, it's quicker, but you can use, only use it when you're working with numbers. Sometimes you might be able to work with variables. So again, upside down division box for 8 and 12. I'll show you how you find the least common denominator using this for just numbers. So 4 goes into both of those. So 4 goes into 8 twice. 4 goes into 12 three times. All right, so what's this is my GCF, but if I multiply all the outside numbers together, and I can't break this down any further, your least common denominator is 4 times 2 times 3 is 24. Now, that means this fraction, 5x squared over 8 plus 7x over 12, equals something over 24 plus something over 24. And one of the reasons why I like the staircase method with numbers is because it automatically tells you what you have to multiply to the 8. Well, the 4 times the 2 is my 8. The number underneath the 12 is what has to be multiplied to the top and bottom of 5x squared over 8. So 15x squared goes here. So 12 was the 4 and the 3. That other factor, 2, has to be multiplied top and bottom, so 14x. So now my answer, with my denominators being the same, is 15x squared plus 14x, that binomial, all over 24, and we're done. Okay, now over here, a subtraction problem, 8 and 12. What we'll do over here is we'll do this one by prime factorization so you can see the difference in the numbers compared to what we do over here. So staircase method versus prime factorization. So first you've got to do the prime factorization of each denominator. 8x, we saw 8 was 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the third times x. 12 is going to be 4 times 3 or 2 squared times 3 times an x squared. There they are, prime factorization. My least common denominator is to list every one once, a 2, a 3, and an x. Biggest power on the 2 is 3. On the 3 is a 1, and the x is a 2. 8 times 3 is 24, x squared. So that's what you'd have to do if it was just numbers. So comparing this to this, it would be 8 would be 2 to the third power, 2 squared times 3, You'd find your least common denominator, write out 2 and 3, 3 and a 1, multiply together, get 24. Okay, so to change my fractions, 7 over 8x minus 5 over 12x squared, again, look at what's factored out for the LCD. 
what's missing with 8x? That's down here with the 24x squared. Well, 2 cubed, that's a match. I don't have the 3, and I'm missing an x. So we'll multiply 3x top and bottom. So this will be 21x. 12x squared has 2 squared times the 3 times an x squared. The only thing I'm missing is an extra 2. So we'll multiply 2 top and bottom. 5 times 2 is 10. So my denominators we know are the same. I've adjusted my numerators. We subtract the top, keep it over 24x squared, and we're done. So again, wouldn't hurt because of all the work you did. It wouldn't hurt to bring your calculator into play. So here, my x is still a 2. So I'm going to type this in. Alpha y equals fraction 5 x squared over 8 plus alpha y equals for my fraction 7x over 12. And that's this decimal. Okay, now type in my answer. This is my answer right here. So alpha y equals fraction 15x squared plus 14x all over 24. I get the exact same decimal answer, so now I know this is the right answer. So again, use that calculator to grade. All right, now we have binomials. Polynomials are here. So now, do not make this mistake. This if you do this, I'm sorry, I'm going to hurt your self-esteem. When I'm grading your test, let's say this is your problem on your test, 2 over x plus 3x over x plus 5, I'm sorry. If this is what you're going to do on your test, we're, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to laugh about you. I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to do it. Okay, I see this all the time, and I giggle every time I see it. This is what I see for people's work. Oh, look, common denominators, 7 plus 3x. That's wrong. That's wrong. It's wrong in so many ways. And here's proof, okay? Let's say x is a 1. Let's say x is 1. So this would be 2 over 1. That's a value of 2. Well, if I add 5 to the top and 5 to the bottom, that's 7 over 6. That doesn't equal 2 anymore. Therefore, this work is wrong. This is why I say always grade with your calculator because sometimes you're going to think, oh, I created a new shortcut and it's mathematically incorrect. And if you test it with your calculator, you'll find out it doesn't work. Okay? All right. So parentheses around the x plus 5 to the first power. These are two prime factors. My LCD is to multiply the both of those together. So in this case, my answer is going to change 2 over x to something over x times x plus 5, and 3 over x over x plus 5 is going to be something over x, x plus 5. So what's missing here? That's down here. It's the x plus 5. I need to multiply that top and bottom. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 5 is 10. 2x plus 10. In the second denominator, I have the x plus 5. I'm missing the x, so I need to multiply x top and bottom. 3x times x, that's 3x squared. All right, add the tops together. You get 3x squared plus 2x plus 10. All right, this does not factor. Therefore, this is my final answer. We are done.
Okay, next. 2x over x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x squared plus x. Factor the bottoms. Difference of perfect squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. x squared plus x is take out a GCF on x, x plus 1. Least common denominators, x times x plus 1, x minus 1. All right, let's change our two fractions. I put them in factored form. What's missing in this denominator that's in my LCD? Oh, I'm missing the x. So we need to multiply x top and bottom. 2x squared. Here's my x times x plus 1. Here's my least common denominator. I'm missing an x minus 1. Multiply that top and bottom. 1 times x minus 1 is x minus 1. All right, add the tops. 2x squared plus x minus 1. Whoa, wait a minute. Hold the phone. We have a potential chance of factoring here. We can factor the top. I'm looking at 2x minus 1 and an x plus 1. So let's see. As we said, both of these have a chance to work. So 2x plus something, 2x minus something because of the minus 1. So, well, wait a minute. 2 and negative 1, that already adds up to 1. So those are my numbers. So 2x plus 2, 2x minus 1, take out the GCF of a 2, x plus 1, 2x minus 1, and you can cancel the x plus 1s, and this is my new final answer. Very important to make sure that you can factor the top and get this to work out. Okay, so double check. This one here, I knew it wasn't going to factor because the 2 is too small. 3 times 10, that would be a 30. What two factors multiply to be 30 and add up to 2? The only thing less than 2 is a 1, so that's how I knew it wasn't going to factor. This was way too small, but this had a chance. Now, the downside is if you grade this, this is where you got to be very careful. You type this in, you type in this final answer, you'll get the same decimal saying it's right, but you didn't simplify it. So you got to double check your simplifying. Always check that at the end. Circle this and say double check the factor and solve. All right, S section 6.5, simplifying complex rational fractions. A complex rational expression or fraction is a fraction in which the numerator and or denominator contains more fractions. All right, so there's two ways to deal with this. You rewrite this as a division problem and simplify. Now remember, when you divide by fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So that's one of the advantages of working this technique. So here we have one fraction on the top, one fraction on the bottom. So I'm going to rewrite this using the division symbol. And so we remember that you don't divide by fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal of the second. So I flip the second one, and all of a sudden notice, hey, wait, this is super nice and easy, because now the x's can cancel, the 2 can go into 6 three times, and I'm left with 3 over y, and I'm done. One fraction on the top, one on the bottom, write it as a division problem. Flip the second fraction, factor the x squared minus 9, to x plus 3, x minus 3, so you can cancel the x minus 3's. The 4 and the 8 cancel. We're left with x plus 3 over the 2. One fraction on the top, one on the bottom. Write it as a division problem. Flip the second fraction. Now start your factoring. Here we can take out a 4. 4 times x minus 2. Over here, looks like we're going to get x minus 2x minus 3. Now to the more difficult ones. Okay, so the 2 can work here. So I'm guessing we're going to, we might get another x minus 2 here. And I'm thinking over here the x minus 3 is going to go into this 3. So let's work this one out first. So if that was the case, then 2x squared divided by x would be 2x. 
3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. Middle term check, minus 6x, minus 1x. When you do the middle terms, O and I, outside, inside, gives me the minus 7x. So over here, well, the 2 works and the minus 1 works. So we're kind of in trouble. So 6 breaks down to 3 and 2. 2 breaks down to 1 and 2. It's a plus sign, so it's going to be minus, minus. So we're either looking at 3x minus 1, 2x minus 1. Well, you can't have 2x minus 2 because there's no GCF. So I'm going to go 2x minus 1, 3x minus 2. And, oh, the 2x minus 1 is going to cancel. And our x minus 2s cancel. Our x minus 3 cancels. We're left with 3x minus 2 over 4. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with again. If you don't like that shortcut to factoring, you can use that one technique. Just write everything out like we did in the past in Chapter 5. Work it off to the side and come up with your factors. All right, that's technique number one. I call it number one because one fraction on the top, one fraction on the bottom. Simplifying technique number two, it's two because now you run into two terms, either top and or bottom. And that's why we want to use this technique. All right. So here in this technique, when you see two fractions top or two fractions bottom or two terms top and bottom, we're going to multiply it every numerator by the least common denominators that we have. Every, we're going to get multiplication going here. All right, so looking at my first example, 16 is my biggest number, and I notice that 2 can go into 16, 4 goes into 16, 8 goes into 16. 16 is my least common denominator. So every individual numerator Every individual numerator gets multiplied by 16. So that's going to be four cancellations here. All right, so here we go. 16, well, 4 and 16, 4 goes into 16 four times. 8 goes into 16 twice. 2 goes into 16 eight times. And 16 goes into 16 once. All the four individual denominators are a 1. They've all canceled out. So now... I have 4 times 1 plus 3 times 2. That's 4 plus 6 on the top. On the bottom, we have 8 times 1 is 8, minus 5 times 1, which is 5. 10 over 3. We're done. So again, to back this up here, when I multiply all my numerators by 16, what I'm technically doing is multiplying by 16 over 16. That's a 1. 16 over 16, that's a 1. I'm really multiplying by 1, so I'm not changing anything. Everything's good. Just changing its appearance. All right, here, x plus 1, x minus 1. My two individual denominators is going to be my LCD. This has to be multiplied to every numerator. So this x multiplied by x plus 1, x minus 1. This 1 is a term. It gets multiplied by, well, I'll multiply it together, x squared minus 1, because nothing's going to cancel. This one in the numerator, x plus 1, x minus 1. So let's start to cancel. x plus 1, x plus 1 cancels. x minus 1, x minus 1 cancels. I'm now left with x times x minus 1 over x squared minus 1 times 1, no change, plus 1 times x plus 1. All right, so on the bottom, we can add this together. Let's see, the negative 1 plus 1 will cancel, so we're going to have x squared plus x on the bottom. I multiply in the x to get x squared minus x. I cannot cancel this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually work backwards and say, let's leave this factored. Let's factor the x squared plus x. We can take out the x's and cancel those. Final answer, x minus 1 over x. All right, next one, we have an x minus 7, x plus 7, x plus 7, x squared minus 49, which happens to factor to x plus 7, x minus 7. So this is my LCD. All right, so we're going to multiply this 
to the 2, the 1, the 6, and the 1. Well, I'm not going to write this out. I'm going to start to shortcut it. I'm going to look at this right here. If I multiply 2 by my LCD, I see the x minus 7 canceling. So that's gone. I need to multiply it by an x plus 7. Over here by this 1 over x plus 7, I can see the x plus 7 canceling. So the 1 gets multiplied by x minus 7. Down here, the x plus 7 cancels, leaving me an x minus 7 multiplied to my 6. Here, everything cancels, so just the 1 is left over. So we have 2x times 7, 2x plus 14, minus 1x plus 7. We've got to distribute the minus 1 over 6x minus 42 minus that 1. Combine like terms on the top, we'll get 2x minus x is x. 14 plus 7, that's 21. Here we'll get minus 42 minus 1 is minus 43. Okay, no GCF here, nothing to cancel or reduce. We're done. So complex fractions come in two types. One fraction top and bottom. Type 2, two fractions top and bottom. They each have their own technique and how to simplify.